Hey guys, and welcome to Sasquatch Theory. Well, springtime has arrived here in the show me state of Missouri. It has been cold and rainy out, so I've been cooped up inside a ton lately. It really sucks because I want to be outside exploring the forest this time of year. I have noticed that when the oak trees start budding in the late spring, the Bigfoot start moving around and interacting with people a lot more. I just think the thick foliage on the trees really helps them hide a lot better. If you want to find an area that has year-round activity, it's probably best to look around big forested areas. Typically I will find Sasquatch sign within the conifer trees. Cedars and pines stay green year-round and even with a drone, it is nearly impossible to see the forest floor in these areas. Cedars and pines also give off a heat signature that is similar to cannabis. So in my opinion, it would be very easy for them to hide in these areas and avoid being detected by technology. Then you have to wonder if the elite people of this world had the evidence of such a thing, would they share it with each and every single one of you? The best way to experience some Bigfoot activity for yourself is just to spend large amounts of time in the forest. You also have to be where the Sasquatch are located, which can be a hair pulling task to achieve. You could be 200 yards off and not get any activity at all. The way I like to think about it is from a hunter's point of view. You have to go where the big bucks are. Or if you are a mushroom picker, my analogy for that is the Sasquatch are a lot like morel mushrooms. They are not everywhere and they are difficult to see, but they are around here and there. Anyone who has looked for morel mushrooms knows how difficult of a task it can be to locate them. Many times they are right under your nose and you don't even know it. The power of not moving and blending into your environment is the best camouflage out there. In this video I get in contact with Erica from Georgia. She has had several experiences and an eye sighting. She spends a lot of time out in the woods seeking out these creatures. This is my first Georgia story and I'm excited to finally get my foot in the door with this state. Alright, enough of me talking. Let's get into this next Bigfoot interview from the state of Georgia. Welcome to Sasquatch Theory, and I appreciate you being on the show. Thank you. Good to be here. Glad to hear that. Could you tell me about your Bigfoot encounters that took place in New York and the state of Georgia? Sure. Um, it was mostly Georgia, but my first um, experience was in New York. Um, mm -hmm. When I was growing up, uh, we had some property up in the Catskills on top of a mountain, and I spent a lot of time up there. So I got to know the local local animals and the sounds and everything. And uh, when I became a teenager, my father wound up selling that. It was a single wide and the property. But I loved it up there so much. So we used to go we used to go camping up there nearby. So we picked a weekend one time. We went camping on some state land um, up in New York. It was and it was right on a river that runs into one of the. Um, um, not the lakes where they get the drinking water from New York city. Mm -hmm. And, um, so my sister and her husband had gone up the night before and they spent the night in the tent. And then when we got up there in the late afternoon, they had already gone. They, th their tent was there, but they went into the nearest town to go to a bar or something. So it was me and my boyfriend and another couple. And, uh, we set up our tents. We started the fire and everything. And, we decided to go lay out in a nearby field and sky watch for a little while just to look at the stars and everything. So we brought blankets and we went out. We were laying in a field. could still see our campfire off in the distance. And then uh, there was some raccoons all of a sudden up in the trees near kind of between us and, my, and our campfire where our tents are. 
and the raccoons were screaming. Like they weren't fighting with each other, but they were all screaming. And I've heard that before, and I know that they can get in fights and they make a lot of noise. But this kind of sounds different to me. Like I was a little uncomfortable with it. But uh, my friends were from the city. They didn't really spend time upstate. So they were like, come on, let's go see what they're screaming about. And I'm saying, I don't think it's such a good idea. They're like, come on, come on. So they all start walking to where the raccoons are up in the trees screaming. And my one girlfriend has a, uh, a flashlight. So I just follow because I don't want to be left out in the field by myself. And we get to where we're standing at the bottom of these trees, these big trees. And we're looking up and we could see. The raccoons up in the trees screaming, looking down at us. And we're flashing the flashlight up saying, you know, what are they screaming about? And then out of nowhere, it was the scariest noise I've ever heard in my life. It was like this deep seated growl, roar. It sounded like, like larger than life, like a lion and like a Kodiak bear mixed. So None of us said anything. Of course, we all just froze. And my girlfriend dropped her flashlight. And we all started running through the forest back towards our campfire. And uh, I am I got my hands up in the air because I can't see where I'm running. I'm running in the dark. And I'm ready for my hands to run into some giant bear or something. I didn't know what it was. We're getting knocked out by a tree. So we all run back to the campfire. My friend Dave gets his shotgun out of the tent and he starts shooting up into the air to scare whatever it was away. Um, now, I had heard of Bigfoot, Sasquatch, but I never really gave it much thought because I thought it was something that happened in like Oregon or Washington. And I never even thought much about it. Like maybe there was one, like it was this one famous thing that everybody saw. So I had no idea there was more than one, and I had no idea that they could be, or they are, all over the country. So at the time, we just figured it was a really, really large bear. Now, um, I don't know if you normally do this, but I would love for anybody listening to this show to write in, if they know anything about black bears, if that sounds normal, like, does, is that something that would do, they would do? Or I kind of think black bears up in the in New York are kind of afraid of people and that they would run away. Um, I don't know if they would growl at four adults and scare us, but I mean, you know, that could be. So we stayed up all night. We all sat with our backs to the fire and my friend Dave with the shotgun in his hand. We were so scared. Finally, when the sun finally came up, we all decided to go to bed. And then my sister and her boyfriend came back. And they came to our tents to wake us up. And they, my sister said, you know, you never believe what happened last night, what came to the camp. And I said, was that a really big bear or something? And she's like, yeah. So they heard it the night before. It was outside their tent walking around. She said she could hear it breathing. And they were really scared. And they started banging pots and pans together to scare it away. But they never looked out the window and actually saw that it was a bear. So that's my possible encounter i mean could it have been a bear yeah, yeah sure but i'm not sure and that's what got me hooked when i started in 2011 when finding bigfoot came out and i know a lot of people don't like that show but i think that show opened up a lot of doorways um for people like myself to see that they're all over the country and then i started thinking back to that thing that happened to me on the river in new york and i thought the possibility is that that could have been a Bigfoot. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So I, I, when I found that out, I saw that's when my interest really started getting peaked. Mm -hmm. And then I wound up, um, that was in, um, like 1987, that encounter with whatever it was that sounded absolutely huge. I mean, that the roar growl, you, I could feel it. I felt like my hair was blown back from it, you know, and you could feel it like in your chest. It was just the scariest thing. So then I moved down to um, South Carolina, Georgia border. I uh, stayed with my sister for a little while and I bought some property out in the country in Southeast Georgia. And now the property uh, with a, um, with a home on it is about a half an hour from the Savannah river, not a half an hour. I'm sorry. I apologize. A half a mile. As the crow flies, my home is from the Savannah River. 
So I move into this new home and I'm not afraid of the country, but you know, I'm used to the New York country, but the Georgia, uh, like low country and the, it's just a whole different ball game. So I moved out there and I'd be going outside in the backyard. Um, and I would hear things and I wouldn't know what I was hearing. And it sounded like to me, I remember telling people, it sounds like a jungle. Because I would hear these weird whistles at night. And I thought it was some kind of like jungle bird or something. Really loud whistles. I didn't know what it was. And then um, after some time, I was standing in my backyard one night. This is kind of going off topic, but it's not. But I was standing out in the field of my backyard. And I could see, you know, over towards the Savannah River, this big ball of light it it looked like from where i was it looked like it was like the size of a house and it was going up river like from savannah towards like the mountains upstate georgia that direction north and it just floated and it went above the river i mean i know i've seen helicopters with with spotlights before and all that kind of stuff this was just a self-contained round huge ball of light following the river I don't know what that was. Um, I told a couple of people about it. You get the usual, like, you know, you, you know, looks like you're crazy. So after a while, um, I had two dogs at the time. One has since passed away. And I would let them out a lot. And sometimes there was this back corner of my property where the forest started that was just had this feeling, this weird, creepy feeling. And it had like almost like a tunnel of, of, of branches that were cut out. So like you could stand back in the forest and then just kind of look straight at my house from in there. And it gave me the creeps and my dogs were always back there and there was always noise back in the woods. And sometimes my dogs would charge the fence barking, but then other times there was something back there that had my dogs hightail it into the house. Like their like their butts were on fire. So, um, I started thinking about that and looking at um, Google Earth and realizing that there is a game trail and I could see it from Google Earth from the river right to that corner of my property. So I'm like, oh, OK, you know, maybe it's for deer or something, which I sh I'm sure it was. So I started putting some food out there and uh, I started seeing deer and all sorts of stuff. But I noticed that when the deer well, there was a herd of deer that lived in my area. And when they would run through the woods um, at the back of my property, I really wouldn't be able to hear them. I was standing there one time and they ran kind of past me and I could barely hear their footsteps or any twig snapping. They're surprisingly quiet. And um, then I started noticing something else in the woods that at times it sounded like a herd of elephants we're running through the woods like crash boom snap type of thing and uh that started piquing my curiosity so um i got my boyfriend to take we'd go out every single weekend friday and saturday night we'd go out looking for sasquatch now he's not a believer but he just did it because i'm just like it's such a passion of mine so we would go try everywhere and, uh, you know, we'd go to dead end roads out in the country and we'd just drive around and we saw a lot of cool animals. But, you know, granted, we never saw a Bigfoot. So um, one day we did notice uh, a tree twist and snap in the, in the, on the side of my backyard. Now, I put up like a farm fencing, just like that, that like almost like chicken wire going around my backyard to keep the wild hogs out because I don't want them attacking my dogs. Now, right, uh, right past that, it was a pretty decent sized tree. It had to have like a, at least a four inch uh, circumference or maybe bigger. It was about, probably like about eight feet off the ground. It was twisted and just bent over and it was fresh. Like it had just happened. Like you could see, we noticed it because of the, the white inside of the, you know, the fresh part of the tree sticking out like a sore thumb inside the forest. So we saw that. And I'm like, huh? I'm like, I'm telling my boyfriend, I'm like, I think there's a Bigfoot here. I think there's Bigfoot. And he kind of laughs at me like I'm crazy. And then not long after that, this was summertime. 
and uh, I kept chickens in my backyard, and uh, and I had uh, two dogs, my cats. So I bought a little kiddie pool, one of those la- little plastic kiddie pools, and I would fill it up with water. And I had just gotten it, and so it hadn't rained. It was like a real dry, at least two weeks in, in southern, southern, southeastern Georgia. So I had filled up the water in the kiddie pool, um, at least ten inches, maybe a foot. And I went to the house and I, you know, went, went on with my day, went to bed, got up the next day and went out and looked at the kiddie pool and it was empty, totally empty. And, and I said to my boyfriend, I'm like, look at this. I'm like, what is going on? Where did all the water go? He's like, it has to be leaking. I picked it up because it was empty. I look, I'm like, the, the ground is bone dry. There's, he's like, no, it's probably just dried. It's got to be leaking. I filled it up again that night and the next day we went out and we looked and uh, it was all there. There was no leak in the kiddie pool and it would be, it was really heavy after I couldn't pick it up. It was, you know, full of water. Water's heavy. I don't know what can come into my backyard, step over a four foot fence or whatever kind of animal it was or however many there were, it can drink a whole kiddie pool full of water. I have no idea. And the odd thing is, I also had one of those inflatable pools to swim in, and uh, it looked like the ring, the inflatable piece on top, somebody had pushed the side of it down because it was kind of still down and it was all wrinkly, like somebody took their hands and shoved it down and like so some water came out. But I guess they chose not to drink that water, but they drank the fresh water from my well. Um, if that was, that's, I mean, that's just my opinion is... Maybe, you know, the Sasquatch family came and drank the water or an alien sucked the water up for some reason. There's no explanation for that whatsoever. If anybody can figure it out, I'd be more than happy to listen to what they have to say about it. So um, I'm living out in the country, as I said, and I get a job driving a school bus. So I'm driving a school bus for a good two years and uh, I'm out there like 5.45 every morning warming up the bus and getting every, you know, doing my safety check and getting ready. And um, I leave my house and I drive down to the end and I make a left on the nearby highway that kind of comes back parallel to my road. And I'm driving and the sun is like just about to come up where you can, it's light out. You could see everything, but the sun just hasn't poked over the horizon yet. And I'm coming around this curve on the highway. It was It's a highway, but there's not a lot of traffic because I'm in the middle of nowhere. I mean, my town has not one red light. We have one store that they just put in, a dollar store. And uh, there's no stop signs. It's a really small town. There's like nobody there. So I'm going down the highway. And I see ahead of me what I think is a man. And I, the first thing I thought to myself was, wow, that's a really tall guy. And then my second thought was, this is kind of happening in slow motion. I'm thinking, wow, he must be really old because it looked like his head was coming out of his chest. So it looked like his neck was kind of like falling down and like, so his head was coming out of his chest. So like an old, like an old man sometimes hunched over. So now I'm thinking, okay. He's a really tall, really old man, and he's dressed in dark clothes from head to toe. And then the weird thing happened was he wasn't running. He was casually strolling, but he was covering ground like I couldn't believe how fast this thing was moving. And and uh, luckily, where he crossed the road, he walked right by a sign which showed when you're coming from the opposite direction that there's a curve coming up in the road. So it's just an arrow curve. He crossed right at that sign. And then I realized that man is taller than that sign. So I'm thinking, you know, what is, is, um, all of a sudden it hits me. I'm like, is that a Sasquatch? Is that a Sasquatch? And I'm coming up to it so fast. He crossed the grass um, and then got into this like kind of young pine forest where there's a lot of branches really low down. So I, I slowed down and was looking and I didn't see a thing. And there's no way if that was a human that they could have walked 
from the middle of that highway, across the highway, all the way across the grass, through, you know, through the gully on the side of the road and into the pine forest. And the amount of seconds it took my bus just to come like from around this corner. It was like I was I was beside myself. I couldn't believe it. So I had to go on with my route. I took all the kids to school. I got home and I called my sister. I said, listen, she lives an hour away from me on the other side of the river in South Carolina. I said, you got to come over here tonight. I'm like, I saw a Sasquatch. I swear I saw a Sasquatch. You have to come over here. She's like, okay, I'll come. So, you know, I do my afternoon route and I come home, get home around five and she comes over and we get in the car and we start kind of driving around and I show her I'm like, this is where I saw it cross. And I pulled my car around onto the side of the road. And I'm like, it was as tall or actually a little taller than that sign. So I got out of the car and I walked up to the sign and I stood right in front of it. And I put my arm up and I could barely touch the bottom of the huge triangle, um, not triangle, like a square on its side. I could barely reach the bottom of the sign. So if I'm reaching up, that has to be at least six foot. And I had to be at least another three foot beyond that. So whatever it was, it, it couldn't have been human. So we're driving around looking for this thing. And I just had this feeling like the sun was just about to come up. So wherever it went, I think it had a bed down because it doesn't want to be walking around in the daytime. Just my, just my, you know, what I think it would do. So I'm like, I think it's still around here. And I think when the sun comes down, it's, you know, it's going to start moving again. So. I have this, um, past my house, I have this kind of like dead end road. And at the end of the road is a log yard. And then there's the Savannah River. So it, if it was walking straight towards the river, it would have wound up right by this dead end road. So I take my sister down to the end of the dead end road and I turn the car around and I shut it off. And I'm sitting there and I'm telling her about my sighting and, and you know, what, you know, talking about Sasquatch and telling her these things that I've heard on podcasts. And uh, all of a sudden she's looking at the, she's looking at the woods and stuff. And she's going, I'm feeling, I'm getting really creeped out right now. She goes, I feel like something's looking at us. And I'm like, no, no, come on, get out of the car. Let's go walk up and down the street and see if, you know, we make some calls and see what happens. She would not get out of the car. So finally she's like, we have to go. We have to go. She's like, Eric, you got to go now. So I'm like, oh, I didn't really want to leave. So I start up the car and I'm going as slow as I possibly can just to make it last because I, you know, I want to see something. And out of nowhere, behind the car, something must have ran out from the woods and slapped the back of the car. One, two, three, bap, bap, bap. And then kept going. Like it started at the left back of the car, then a slap in the middle, then a slap on the back right. And we both looked at each other. And, and I'm saying, what, what was that? I'm like, are you slap it on the car? She's like, no, I think we must have ran over a stick or something. Or, and I'm like, there's nothing in the road. I didn't run over every, anything. I was going two miles an hour. And uh, so just to prove to her, I turned around and I went back down the road. She was not happy about it. But to show her there was nothing, not even a twig, nothing in the road that could have made that noise. So either a person was standing in the woods in the dark and then came out and slapped the back of the car, or it was that Sasquatch messing with us. In other words, like, ha ha, you leave and you know, like, you know, I was here the whole time, bang, bang, bang. And um, that, which is what I thought it was. People where I lived in Georgia don't go in the woods and they certainly don't go in the woods at night. There are venomous snakes, there's wild hogs. You just don't do it unless you're hunting at, in hunting season, you have, you know, you have a gun with you or something. So um, we go home. She's scared. So then after that, every weekend, that was my spot. I my, I tell my boyfriend, you know, you got to take me over there. I would get out. We'd park. And we'd walk up and down that road. And I would do some, do some Sasquatch calls and stuff. So I'd do that weekend after weekend. And one weekend, I did it. And we were standing outside. And there was... We heard these two, at least two things coming through the woods towards us. And it sounded like, it sounded like 
I don't, I can't, I don't even know, some huge animal. I mean, you could hear, you know, trees and sticks and crash, crash, crash walking towards us. And I'm looking at him, I'm going, Sasquatch, Sasquatch, and he doesn't believe it. So um, we're standing by his pickup truck and down the road a piece, a bush shakes. So he walks down there to where the bush shakes and he's looking in the woods and he doesn't see anything waiting for something to happen. And then it gets quiet. And then he comes back to me. And as soon as he gets back to me, the bush shakes again. So he walks down there again. And then the one standing in front of me, I heard this really loud. It was like a, a snort kind of noise. Kind of sounded like a wild hog, but not like, I don't know. It's like a grunt snorting noise. Whatever it was, it was big. So, you know, he heard it too, thank God. But he still doesn't believe. He has to see it. So he comes walking back. And I'm trying to, you know, I'm talking to them. He thinks I'm crazy. And uh, we stood there for a while. We kind of heard them moving around in there. And after a while, it was like quiet for like a half an hour. So I'm like, well, you know, I guess they left. You know, we were waiting and waiting. So we drive out of that dead end road down my road a little bit and we pull into my um my dirt driveway and we're coming down the dirt driveway and we pull up park the truck and we could hear something really big running around the back of my property but then there was more noise across from my across from my home right across from my lawn where the woods were so i'm like i'm like could they have followed us I'm like, he's like, I don't know, but it sounds like that giant just ran around the back of the house. I'm like, and then we hear a noise right across from the front. So we walk up to the forest and I'm standing there looking in. And you can't see anything down in Georgia. I mean, there's so many vines and sticker bushes and just everything. It's just thick. And I'm standing there looking in and, and he kind of walks down the road a little and he's looking in over there just like before. And then I heard something and it was taking steps right at me. It was, it was walking right towards me. Like it was about to step out of the woods. So I started backing up and I'm just scared. So scared. I'm backing up, walking backwards. And I'm going, no, no, oh no, oh no. And I'm just walking backwards and it stopped just before I could see it. And he hears me. He's, and so he comes over and I'm like, I'm telling you. I'm like, did you hear that? Something was walking right at me. I, like, I expected it to fully just walk right out of the forest. So after a while, I kind of got scared. I couldn't stand near the woods anymore. So I sat on the tailgate of my truck. And he's standing there looking in the woods. And he's standing on top of, like, a berm. And then beyond where he is, it kind of goes down into this little kind of, like, swampy area. So he's standing there looking. And he's looking. And he's looking. He doesn't hear anything. And he comes walking back to the truck. And when he gets back to the truck, I look in this spot where he was just standing and I see eyes. But it's not what people usually report. They weren't red. They weren't orange. They weren't amber. They were, it was like white, white, white eyes. And I would see one. And it was a big, it, they were big eyes. I would see one peek out from behind a tree. And then it would go back. And then I would see, I'd see it peek out again. And there would be two eyes. And it'd be looking right at me. And then it would go behind the tree again. And I'm, pointing, I'm like, look, look, it's right there. Look. And then he started seeing it. So I'm like, do you believe me now? Do you believe me now? He's like, no, that's got to be an owl. Because I'm saying, look how high it is. Look how tall it is. He's got He's like, it's got to be an owl in a tree. Well, I don't know. I've never seen owl eyes in a tree before light up. But, you know, who knows? So uh, I think that they knew exactly who I was and where I live. So um, something interesting, I forgot to tell you, when I first bought the property out in the country in Georgia, I was riding down my street, about a half mile down my street, and there was a man standing out in the street. He's about my age. And I pulled over to say hi and talk to him and tell him I just moved in the road down there. And uh, we were talking a little bit, and I said, what kind of animals you got around here? I'm from New York. you know. I'm not familiar with what's down here. And he says to me, oh, he goes, we got deer and we got coyotes, got some wild boar. And then he says, and we got other things. And I just look at him, I go, do you mean Bigfoot? 
And man, his eyes popped out of his head and his jaw dropped up. And he goes, how do you know about that? And I'm like, I, I know about Bigfoot. And he's like, get out of here. I can't believe you just said that. Well, I wound up meeting his whole family. I mean, every pretty much everybody that lived on that road I was living on were related. All their cousins and they were all brothers and they had the same grandmother. So I, you know, I'd hang out with them sometimes and they all would make fun of him. They made fun of him for years about this, the fact that he said he saw a Bigfoot cross the road, the same road that I lived on, walking towards the Savannah River. And he said it was, it looked like it was about 10 feet tall and nobody and his family believed him, and they all made fun of him for years until I came along. And I was the first person that he actually talked to and found out about it, you know, like he could relate to. So uh, I thought that was pretty cool. And um, so then after that, uh, this, this, is, this is crazy, but we went about 30 uh, 30 miles as the crow flies up the Savannah River to the next Savannah River crossing from South Carolina to Georgia. There's this old piece of highway there and an old bridge um, that is out of commission. So they built a new highway and a new bridge. But you could walk through the woods and take this highway, this old, it's kind of like crumbling a little bit, and walk through the woods on this old highway. And it takes you to the little piece of bridge that's sticking out into the river. Now it's like, I don't know, at least a mile there and a mile back. And uh, so we're walking up on this bridge and looking down, you know, you could kind of see it's swampy down there. I, like I always do, in a, anywhere I'm near forest, I make a Bigfoot call. Um, within a minute later, it sounded like, I, I, I guess it was a tree knock, but it sounded like it, something picked up an actual tree and hit another tree. It wasn't, it was like, boom. And you could hear like the pieces of tree, like just crumbling. It sounded like a tree explosion. And it wasn't a tree falling down. It wasn't like crack, 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 slam. It was just like somebody hit a tree with another tree or a really big log or something. And it, it was just amazing. I, and I look at my boyfriend, I'm like, now you believe me? I'm like, what? Explain that. Explain that to me. He's like, I can't explain it. So that, again, that was along a river. And then uh, just two months ago, it was at Christmas time. We drove way out into the country um, to go to this farm that has all these Christmas lights set up. And you drive through the farm and look at all this stuff. And uh, when we left, we went the wrong way and we kind of got lost a little bit. So we needed a place to turn around and you can't really turn around on these back Georgia roads because, you know, they kind of go down for the rain on the side. So you can't. Um, so coming up, we saw a sign for uh, like a pull off, um, a little like boat ramp. So we pulled up this road and we pulled down this gravel road into this little like gravel and dirt parking lot that was along a, a river. Now this isn't, it wasn't the Savannah river. It was the Okichi river. Um, so we pull up and he turns off his truck and gets out. So I'm like, okay, you know, I guess that's what we're doing. Um, and it was a full moon. So I get out of the truck and I'm looking up at the moon and I take my phone out and I'm taking pictures because the, the Spanish moss is hanging down in front of the full moon. And I'm thinking, wow, that looks really cool. And Meanwhile, he's walking towards the ed edge of the river. Now, at this particular boat ramp, you know, you could, it's like for little boats, John boats or, or kayaks or whatever. The right side of the boat ramp is clear, but the left side, there's all these bushes alongside. So as soon as he gets down to the edge of the river and it's dark out and, you know, we're standing under this overpass almost that's going over the river. He gets down there and all of a sudden you hear kaploom like something like jumped into the river splash and i heard it and i turned around and by moonlight i could see my boyfriend he i never seen him run from anything he was running up up the boat ramp and i um standing there like what was that he's like i don't know okay now i've seen alligators since i've been here and a gator you'll hear it go into the water like a little splash and then they swim quietly Whatever this was that jumped into the river right on the other side of the bushes where he was, was now walking towards underneath 
the overpass. And it sounded huge because it was like making all these splash swishing noises. Kind of like if you got into a, uh, a three foot pool and you were a big guy and you were trying to get from one end to the other and you were walking through it or even, a, you know, three and a half foot, whatever it is. It was making so much noise trying to get across the river. Um, so my boyfriend runs up to the truck. He's like, get a flashlight, get a flashlight. So we get out a flashlight and run. he runs back down to the edge. I wouldn't go near it. I was too scared. And he's looking, but the flashlight wasn't going far enough underneath the overpass. It just wasn't a bright enough light. And we would hear it moving through the river and then it would stop. And then it start would start moving again. And it was making so much noise. It either had to be like the biggest horse in the world or like a giant gorilla or something. I don't, I never heard anything like it and neither is he. And he's Southern. He's been down here. So, you know, it's not just I'm from New York and I don't know anything. Well, that could, that could be too. But I mean, I don't understand. How could there be so many more than I could have possibly imagined? Like, what are the chances of all this happening? And the weird thing is, it's always by a river. It's always within a half an hour, I mean, a half a mile or closer to one of the rivers around here. Yeah. Do I sound, do I sound crazy? <laughs> no, not at all. A lot of the activity that I have experienced took place near some type of waterway, and a lot of people report that as well. Yeah. Well, I know I, I you know, we had a lot by my house, and then this little newspaper did an article. My friend just happened to find it, and it was about uh, Sasquatch sightings by two families that live in the same little town in Georgia on the Savannah River that I did. So now I know there's other people besides the one that I met that, that lived down the road from me that have seen these things right here, right in this, in that little community, right on the Savannah river. Mm -hmm. And then the other one was 30 miles up. When I heard the tree explosion noise, that was 30 miles up the same river. I don't think it was the same pod or family unit or whatever you want to call them of Sasquatch because that one sounded it was it didn't sound as nice. Mine never made any like scary noises or anything. And they weren't really vocal. They were um they were kind of quiet. There was a lot of whistling. And the one I saw, I saw from the side. So I don't know how wide his shoulders were, but he wasn't as girthy as Patty is, you know, from the from the Gimlin footage. Mm -hmm. Um it wasn't as it looked like a very well built, like hundred year old basketball player that <laughs> that could with that could just walk like amazingly fast. Mm -hmm. How just, many strides did it take for it to cross the road? And you no, know, I wasn't. I wasn't counting the strides because I was just trying to figure out something was odd about this person. You mm -hmm. know, the fact that he was so tall, and I don't know how he was walking so fast because he had to be old because his head wasn't sitting on top of his head on top of his neck it was like just kind of sunk down in front of him that's what right. i was thinking about it was like attached to its chest and like hunched over yeah, pretty much it, yeah it looked like it was coming out of his chest okay and you mentioned yeah, you went back with your friend and the sign was a lot taller than what you initially thought oh yeah oh yeah i was driving a school bus and i realized after i had seen that the rest of the day when i was Drop it off and picking people up. I, I would see parents out there with the kids and they look so little. They look so little. You have to walk up a whole bunch of steps to get into that driver's seat. And you're pretty high up there. You're like, you know, it's like driving a, a track trailer up high. And for yeah. the first thing that crosses my mind is that guy's tall because usually everybody else looks so tiny. Yeah, Crazy. I went years telling my encounters on shows saying, oh, this thing was six foot tall, but it wasn't till here recently. You know, I went back to that spot and I kind of, you know, guessed, OK, it was yeah. about that high. And I walked over to that tree where I pointed at. And by the time I got there, the height that I pointed at was pointing at was just way taller than what I initially thought. And Exactly. You know, I feel lucky because I would have thought maybe that was a Sasquatch. 
just because of how fast it moved and, and that it looked tall. But the fact that it happened across right where that curve sign was. Mm-hmm. And when I got out of the car and walked up to that curve sign, I was like, holy cow. There's no way that was a human being. No way. I, mean, did, I wanted he, to... did he pay any attention to you? Did he look yeah. over at you? He might have looked over when I first came around the curve. But, it is, you know, I was trying to figure out why is there a person in the middle of the highway? There's no homes there. There's no houses. It's just it's where I, I'm from. It's just cotton fields and woods and pine forests. So I was trying to figure out why was he there? And then I'm like, wow, he's tall. And then I'm like, wow, his head, his neck is like messed up. And then, uh, and then, you know, he's walking, he's swinging his arms. No, he did not look at me that I noticed after, you know, after that, he might've quickly saw me when I first came around the turn, but he didn't, he didn't look over at all. He just walked straight into that pine forest. Mm-hmm. Like, like couldn't care less if I was there. Yeah. What I'm seeing a trend of is normally when people have a Bigfoot encounter or some type of experience, they have more than one. And I noticed that too. Yeah. Yeah. It's either you have a couple or you have nothing at all. Well, you know what the, the bad thing is, and, and it, it's really breaking my heart. I got a shoulder injury and, uh, I left my job and that home I have there out in the country, I, I'm now renting and now I live uh, in Savannah with my boyfriend and I didn't realize realize how I felt like I was kind of getting attached. You know what I mean? Like I realized, I really believe that they know who everybody was and they they knew who the cars belonged to. They knew who was living around there and they know where they could go. It just, I just, I really miss being out there. So what I, I actually sold my truck and I bought a minivan and I ripped all the back seats out and I, I put a cot back there and I got a little like kitchen thing. And I, I made sure I bought one with a, a sunroof that I could open and I could actually stand inside the van and look out. And now I go out into the country all the time and find places or I go to, or I go to campgrounds that are try to, I try to go by rivers and stuff. And I just spent a couple of nights there. Uh, just me and my dog just like squatching and I, you know, looking for proof and finding footprints. And next month I'm going camping out in the middle of the Okefenokee swamp. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I um, am. I'm obsessed. Yeah. If I'm ever out that, that way in Georgia, maybe I'll contact you and. Absolutely. Oh, and there's one other, actually two quick other things. Do we have time really fast? Yeah, we got time and I still have multiple questions <laughs> okay uh there were two things that i forgot to tell you about um i would make my boyfriend go on these like hiking excursions with me so mm-hmm. i found this old abandoned railroad that kind of came out of the savannah wildlife refuge and just kind of went through there was like nothing around so i'm like this is a great place to try and look for sasquatch so we're going down these i'm sorry my dogs are barking going down these railroad, abandoned railroad tracks, right? And they're going through the swamps. So they had built up these, you know, the the railroad track was on like a peak and down both sides um, was like cliff into like swamps. So it was like built up to keep it out of the water. Now, the weird thing about it was over time, like trees were growing and stuff, but on both sides of the railroad tracks and on the cliffs, Trees were falling over, but they were always fell uphill and across the railroad tracks. Do you know what I'm saying? Like naturally a tree would fall down and it would fall down with gravity. You don't think these, people like walk through there and they like cleared the railroad tracks or like threw them back up. No, there's like, no way. The, there's no, uh, they're huge. there's no way. No, any, anybody, you have to climb up the side. You have to, you have to get off on the side of a highway and kind of climb up like this steep embankment to get up to the railroad tracks. There's no way they can get any machinery or anything up there. Okay. I got you. Yeah. And it wasn't like cut like with a, a, a um, saw or anything. These were just like falling over trees, but I mean, on the left side and the right side, it's steep embankments and all the trees fell up and over the tracks. Yeah, that is unusual. 
how 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 does that happen? Unless a hurricane did it, but then there was another hurricane that came from the other way and pushed the other trees up and over the tracks. I mean, it goes, we, I didn't make it nearly, I was just spent all my time like trying to climb over trees. It looked like almost like somebody wanted to stop anybody from getting down those tracks. That's what I felt like it was. Mm. So I didn't make it nearly as far into the, into the forest as I wanted to go. And uh, my last story, I have to remember that um, when I first moved down here, now before I had any sightings or anything like that, uh, me and my sister decided that we were going to take a week trip and go to New Orleans um, just for fun. So we were in New Orleans and we always wanted to go um, airboat, um, going to ride on airboat. So the hotel booked that for us and this little bus comes. And picks us up and goes around a couple of other hotels and picks up some people. And we're driving down to wherever this airboat place was. And we're on a raised highway, I guess, because we were going through the, like, the swamps of, of Louisiana. You know, it was very swampy areas. So we're up on this high up concrete overpass, long bridge type of thing. And we're sitting on this bus. And I look down and they're like, there's this big swamp field. It wasn't like deep water, but you can kind of see like muck and dirt and grass. And in the middle of this field, I see a gorilla. It looked like a big gorilla. And it was squatted down and it was doing something with his hands, like digging or something like that. And then my sister is sitting next to me. I'm sitting next to the window. So I can't tell if she's looking. I'm just looking at this gorilla. And then I turn around after I kind of pass it and I look at her and I know, she, I notice she's looking out the window. So I, sw- I say to her, I go, did you just see something really weird? She's like, yeah, I did. And I'm like, okay, okay. Don't tell me yet. And I'm like, I just saw something really weird. And I don't know if it's the same thing you saw. I'm like, what did you say? She said, I saw a gorilla. <laughs> and I'm like, get out. I saw a gorilla. And we're like, why is there a gorilla? Out in the middle of the daytime and, you know, digging something in the middle of this, like, swampy, muddy field. And, like, and she's she's got it. It's got to be it. Probably escaped from a local zoo or something. And anybody else who was driving, like, in a truck or in a bus had to have seen it because it stuck out. But if you were driving in a car, the wall of the concrete, you know, you wouldn't have been able to see it. But, um, I mean, we couldn't turn around. We're in this bus with a bunch of people from a hotel going to you know this go to ride in a boat and we see just a gorilla weird (laughs) pretty unbelievable if she hadn't seen it i would have told her she would think i was crazy it does sound like the activity is following you or you know you're just at in the right area which that could be the case as well you know we're just in the right areas so constantly running into the activity and we're aware of the the subject so we're catching on to it yes i think that's a lot of it and i think if you're not aware you're always like oh that was something else oh that was an owl you know or that was oh a tree just fell down you know most people don't even hear it like they hear it but it doesn't register through their brain so yeah they just think it's a sound of the forest exactly yeah but like you know, my boyfriend was standing there when all those deer run past and they didn't make like hardly any noise. But then, you know, we hear these things going like smash, boom, bam through the forest. I'm like, explain that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's no explanation. I've heard it before. You know, it sounds like a tractor moving through the woods, except it, there's it, no uh, engine, no engine, no exactly. tire sounds. It's just, it's strange. <laughs> exactly. Okay. I wanted to. To go back to the beginning of your story where you mentioned where all these raccoons were up in this tree and they, they're freaking out. Yeah. And you, and you heard this vocalization. Yes. Do you think the vocalization was directed towards you? Like it was trying to get you to get out of Absolutely. there? Absolutely. Absolutely. Definitely. Okay. We walked right up to it. Whatever it was, we were all looking up to the trees. Whatever it was, we walked right up to it. And didn't we weren't looking where we were going? We had one flashlight, and she was pointing up into the trees, and we were all looking up. 
And then it felt like this thing was breathing on my neck when it growled. But we all felt that way because it was just, it sounded so large. Mm -hmm. Now, I want you to kind of gauge the fear level that you experience. Now, maybe like, I don't know, like the feeling like when you're getting pulled over all of a sudden or something bad really happened. What level was this compared to that? This, uh, well, we pretty much all thought we were just about to die. Mm -hmm. We thought whatever it was, it sounded huge and it was, it was just about to kill us. Okay. What, what did the raccoons do after the vocalization happened? Did you even see or did you guys just bolt? No, we, we didn't see. She dropped the flashlight when the, when the, when the roar happened or the growl, whatever it was. And we all just booked it towards the campfire through the woods. You know, hoping you're not going to, like, run into a tree and knock yourself out. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I don't remember. I don't remember. Once he shot off his shotgun a few times, I think that might have put a, put a stop to all his noise. But, I mean, we didn't leave that campfire. Mm -hmm. Okay. You mentioned experiencing some loud whistles at the Savannah River. I think that's what it's um, called. But, yes. By my home. Yes. Loud whistles. Okay, so that's by your house. What what do you think they were saying to you? Kind of kind of describe the whistling. I don't think they were saying anything to me. I all this time, all all, all that time, I thought it was some kind of birds. Mm -hmm. But then I said something to my boyfriend, I'm like he, and I'm like, do you, it sounds like a jungle. Like, listen, it's like what bird does that? He's like, just don't birds don't make n noises at night. I'm like, well, maybe I don't know, but I would hear these loud whistles. I think. It was communication between them. I don't think any of it was directed at me. Yeah. I would, you know, I would just hear it. I would hear it like, you know, behind my backyard. And then, you know, I hear it again, like down close to the river. Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking like, wow, there's some kind of like, you know, funky birds down here in Georgia that make these loud whistle noises. And maybe it is like, I don't know. Was it like a human whistle? It was like a. You know, but better than that, but much louder and much deeper. It was like, just like a, just like a whistle. Mm -hmm. And on you know? the, the Canadian, the Native Americans from Canada, you see on their totem poles, that figure of the Sasquatch and he's like doing a whistle. That's what it looks oh, like really? to me. Yeah. I don't know oh. if you've ever seen that. No. Yeah. They got like the fox and I don't know, whatever every other native animal to that area. And then all of a sudden they got like yeah. this primate looking figure on the totem pole. And well, you know, the, it's got, sorry, it's like, it's got like, it's, it has its lips like perched out, like it's whistling. Yeah. So I think, you know, that's, that's kind of what it's representing. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't think it was me, but um, my boyfriend smokes and he would go out, he would never smoke in my house. So he was always outside at, you know, at night and stuff. And he came in a few times it's saying stuff like, man, something big was just crashing through the forest. Or a couple of times he came in and said he heard what sounded like a banshee scream. But then again, I know there were bobcats there because I saw one dead on the side of the road by my house. Mm -hmm. So um, I know bobcats make some kind of scream and stuff. Yeah. And how often were your two dogs getting scared off? Uh, it was like, you know, once every week or so. When the but, whistling but was happening? I never even put the two together. Yeah. I never put the two together. I know most of the time they would charge that corner and then I'd hear stuff run, you know, and I don't know what kind of animals it was, but it wasn't like anything big that was crashing through the woods. You just hear like maybe twigs and some leaves, you know, but mm -hmm. there were other times where my dogs would go out and they wouldn't go anywhere near that back corner and they'd just be staring at it. Or if they were near it, they just turned around and booked into the house. They couldn't get into the house fast enough. And my dogs aren't afraid of nothing. I got a, a pit bull. And my other one was an English Mastiff. She was about 150-something pounds. And she didn't fear anything. Mm. But real there was quick, definitely something there. Yeah. Real quick, um, this is kind of off topic. There's a guy that has a show. I think it's called Unearth, And... I believe he's from Minnesota, but he did a show in Georgia and he's talking about these pyramids that they 
that they found. At least the government found it, and that they're not really letting anybody in the area. Oh yeah. Yeah, I don't know if you if you looked into that, but it, it's no, apparently I a real thing. I don't know much about it, but oh, thanks for letting me know. Mm. But another question I do have for you is. You found that tree snapped in the backyard. Was it just mm-hmm. twisted? Was it twisted or was it pointing a certain direction? No, it was twisted and bent over and it wasn't pointing it wasn't pointing towards the river, but I did see a lot of bent trees. Mm. A lot and they'd always it always seemed like they were pointing towards wherever the river was. Mm-hmm. at that time and i did see like some odd tree structures nothing like fabulous but something that would make me think and like just a lot of bent trees like how did that tree you know that was going straight up go all the way bent over and back down again like you know like an archway yeah. so a lot of that but um now this one was just twisted and bent down and i didn't i still i have no idea what that was about but as soon as I saw it, I, I knew what did it. Mm-hmm. I did. You no, know, nobody else believes in me, but yeah. A lot of times if you look inside the twist real good, you will find yeah. a hair most of the time. Oh man, I didn't even think of that. I had nobody really to talk to. Yeah, you know? especially when they mess with the pines and cedars and they twist them, all that yeah. sap, the the tree sap, it'll collect yeah. the hairs. Yeah, well, yeah, this wasn't a, uh, it wasn't a pine, but, um, yeah, I wish I could go back. I know I took pictures of it, but then I got a new phone, and I lost all my photos, and, you know, and then when other things are happening, like, well, last month, I mean, in December, when we were down at that river, that thing was splashing through the water, I didn't even think to at least try to record it, so I'd get the sound. Like yeah. it, it didn't even cross my mind that I had my phone in my hand and I was taking pictures of the moon at that time. Never even crossed my mind though to record it. Yeah, it's like you can't, like I only told maybe three or four people in my life about any of this. Like, because, you know, when I do say stuff, like, you know, anytime I say anything like Sasquatch or something on Facebook or wherever, everybody just like makes these laughing emojis. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, no, man, you don't get it. I'm not crazy. I mean, this is really happening, and and there's a lot more of them out there than than you think. And I think once you know they're there, and once you know what to listen for and to look for, they're like they're there. Yeah, and you just got to understand. You know, you encounter this stuff, and you're you're extremely passionate about it, and you're constantly thinking about it. But most people have never really even thought about it once, and they don't even know it exists. It's exactly. that it's real. So, yeah, it's just don't like- be. You, you Go got to cut him some slack. <laughs> yeah, I know. Just kind of like what happened to me in New York. Mm-hmm. And had that had happened now, I would think, oh, man, that's a Sasquatch. Mm-hmm. You know, but like, I hope I hear from somebody listening to your show, if that's normal black bear behavior, if four people walked up to one, would, would it, wouldn't it run away or would it stand up on its hind legs and growl at us and, and do raccoons scream? I never heard anybody say Anything about raccoons having to do with like screaming when there was Bigfoot in the area or anything or even bear in the area. Like, I don't I don't know about any of that. If anybody has any kind of explanation out there, I really want to hear it. Yeah, absolutely. And if anybody's had a Bigfoot encounter in Georgia, I want to hear about it. Oh, yeah, me too. (laughs) Okay. um, You did that vocalization by the river. And mm-hmm. you, you heard just like a tree explode. Yes. What was your first not, thought when you heard that? I mean, that had to have been Bigfoot. You know what I mean? Yes. My fir- first thought was Sasquatch. Yeah. And it, 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 and it normally never is. You know, you're like, what is that? But in this case, when I heard you talk about that, it's like, what else could that be? Right after you do a vocalization. Like, it sounded like two trees in a head-on collision. That's what it sounded like. It was the loudest. It was like a tree explosion with no explosives. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard it. We were the only ones there. We were the only one. There was nobody around us. There was nobody on that long, on that long hike. And we were the only ones there. 
Mm-hmm. And I, I look at I look at Google Earth a lot. That helps me out and see just how much land there is that they could be in. And and I could see that the whole Savannah River from from the from the Atlantic Ocean go goes way up through to this to the North Georgia Mountains. And through the whole thing, except for where there's a city, Augusta. I don't know how they can get through that. I mean, it's not a city, it's a small city, but I mean, there's so much land on the edges of the river where like it overflows when it, it you know, rains too much or it gets swampy or something. There's just so much. Um, it's, you know, it has to be like a highway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they're all connected. So, you know. There's a lot of pine trees in Georgia, isn't there? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's the industry that's where like we make paper here. Like most of the like your paper products come right from here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Here in Missouri, a lot of the Sasquatch activity takes place near pine areas. I mean, you'll find them in the oak trees, but where you find like the structures and the sign, you can really tell that they're spending a lot of time in the pines. Yeah. You know what else I noticed uh, where I was living here in the country, there are so many animals uh, like, I've never seen so much wildlife. So they have so much to eat here. Mm-hmm. Including the fish and whatever else that, you know, they're digging up, you know, and lots of blair- berries. You know, in that back corner of my property, I just remembered I have a huge blackberry patch, wild blackberries. So maybe that's why there was, you know, there was they, always animals back there. Yeah, they love blackberries. Huh. I've heard many stories about blackberry patches. Oh, yeah. Well, there's plenty of them to eat. So I I could see how a whole bunch of them at their size can survive. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be a problem. I imagine they're excellent fishers. I mean, like, or they're excellent at fishing. I mean, they got the long arms, they got big hands, and they just seem like they'd be super quick. I think, I think they're like, they're, they put us to shame on Mm. everything. I I think they're, we think we're so smart, but I I, no. I think they have us beat on everything. Yeah. Cause you, I don't know if you've ever seen people go noodling. It's kind of like where they stick their hand in a hole. Like, yes, I've I've seen it on TV. Yeah. in the bank of the river and they pull out a big catfish. Yeah. I'm sure the Sasquatch know how to do that type of stuff. Oh yeah. Without a doubt. For sure. And, And man, they're just so stealth. And smart, and mm-hmm. I think they know where they can and can't go. And and I think they I think they hang out where I was living. And I I really think they know everybody. And I think that when they saw the bus, they knew it was me. My bus would be parked in front of my house when I wasn't using it. Mm-hmm. I didn't have to take it back to the yard. And yeah. uh, I think they just know who everybody is, and they know where they can be. I think so because when a person starts. His regular routine, let's say if he started a new job, he starts seeing the same people every day, the same things going on from day mm-hmm. to day. And I think with the Sasquatch, they're doing the same exact thing every day. Well, I wouldn't say the same exact thing, but, you know, they I see the same people. Yeah. They, they are aware the of everything going on around them. Man, they are so aware of us and we are just have our heads buried in our phones. Hmm. What if it is possible that they followed you? How smart could they be if that is the case? Very smart that they had to have. They knew where it's like they knew where I lived or maybe they went by the sound of the car. But it sure seemed like they beat us because by the time we pulled up into the driveway, we could hear one going around the side of my house and into the back. But the other ones didn't cross the drive. They stayed in those trees. Yeah. And I had a conversation with the researcher not too long ago about this. And he said, look. It sounds crazy, but dogs are able to do the same thing. You know, cats are too. You know, if you people have abandoned dogs and cats and took them miles away from their home, sadly, and the dog just comes right back. Sometimes that's, even before the owner is back at his home. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. So, and, you know, if, if crows can recognize people's faces, then sure as heck, Sasquatch can recognize people. Yeah, with a head as big as round as a pine tree. I'm sure they can fit a lot of information in that head. (laughs) They don't have to go shopping. They don't have to pay any bills. 
all they worry about is just feeding themselves mm-hmm. and keeping away from us. I, I think they think that we're, we're morons and I think we are. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. I think no, when they think look at people, like the yeah, they look down on us. They're like, look at those monkeys. <laughs> yeah, That's exactly what I think. <laughs> But I think okay. at times, you know, I don't, you know, they don't trust us and they shouldn't because they'll, they, they wouldn't live this long if they trusted us. But no. I think they can build relationships with certain people who they know are safe. Yeah. Humans are bad. I mean, we destroy the earth. We hurt each other. We make nuclear bombs. We wage war on each other. It's always repeating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They will just, yeah. Our government and what they do to people for money and, mm-hmm. but. Yeah, that's why I think these things are superior to us. Yeah, they see that we pollute the earth and we're constantly destroying it. And I'm sure they want nothing, no part of it. Yeah, we're the monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Okay, well, you mentioned in one part of your story where this thing came up to the car and it went bang, bang, bang. Can Yeah. Can you describe that a little more? What, what do you think the message was there? Get I, out? That was... Again, <laughs> a total playful, just a playful, like I was here, like, mm-hmm. and they wanted to let me know before we left. You think it was a juvenile or a big one? I don't know. It sounds like something a juvenile would do. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't think a big one really cares, but you know, if they knew that I saw them, it was my school bus going down the road or, you know, maybe there were more of them that were waiting in the woods on the other side of the road, you know, and it, it just, you know, it was, it was, I think it had to be probably a young one. It wasn't a bad hit where it would make a dent, but it was that look more like a tap, 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 tap. Like it was running across the back of our car. Mm. It was, now, to me, it was fun. Yeah. That, that could have been the situation, you know, it was just trying to entertain itself and, See yeah. what you guys would do. Gauge your reaction. Yeah. You didn't see me. I was here the whole time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that is a strange feeling when something lets you know it's been watching you. And, you know, that happens a lot in the paranormal or with Bigfoot activity. Yeah. You know, it's like they yeah. want you to know, like, hey, I've been here the whole time. Yeah, that's what, exactly what I think it was. Because it wasn't it didn't sound malicious or mean. It wasn't aggressive. It was just like a playful taps. Yeah. Okay. You mentioned in one part of the story where the bushes were shaking or the brush was shaking. Oh, yeah. And I know around probably, uh, I don't know, from let's say September to November, the deer are rubbing on the trees. And a lot of times the bucks will do that and it'll shake the trees. What makes you think that this was something different than that? Well, because it was right on the side of the road. And if it was a deer, I think when we, when he walked over to it, it would have took off. Oh yeah. Without a doubt. And yeah, I I think it would have ran away. Mm -hmm. And how big were the, the bushes that it was shaking? Was it pretty big or was it just like a, like a small cedar? Okay. Big. It was a, it was big bush. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm looking up my next question here. Oh, it's almost like they were trying to draw him away from me, which kind of makes me a little uncomfortable. Yeah, that that is unnerving. That happened when he walked away from you. Yeah, yeah. Well, it shook and he walked down to it, and it stopped and it didn't do anything. Now when he came back to me, it shook again, and then he went down to it again. So it knew what it was like, almost like it knew what it was doing. And then I know the one that made the snort noise, the grunt was right across from where I was standing. Okay. So there were two of them at least. Yeah. So there was more activity happening other than just bushes shaking. Yes. Yeah. That's normally like a good indicator for me. Cause people just, you know, when I tell them stuff, they're like, Oh, he just assumes everything's Bigfoot, but there's multiple things happening that lead up to the conclusion of it being Bigfoot. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Almost every time. Yeah, and the normal person would never think Bigfoot. They would just think, oh, some kind of animal. Yeah, you're more <laughs> concerned about your life at the moment, not Bigfoot. You're thinking, okay, what's coming at me? You know, what is that? Yeah. You're assessing the situation. <laughs> right. Okay. 
um, if you could, could you describe the big white eyes that you saw? It's hard to gauge from where, like, I was on my tailgate, and then I had my driveway, and then it was in the woods, probably, I don't know, it had to be at least six foot in there, six foot deep into the woods. It was just, like, the biggest eyeballs I've ever seen. Like, I knew they were eyes from that far away. And it and didn't could, seem like an owl? I didn't I, think so, because... I don't know what an owl would look like at nighttime. I, I mean, do their eyes glow? I heard owls all the time out there, and they'd all be talking to each other. Mm-hmm. And um, I never saw owl eyes. Yeah, you know? I've never I've seen never. them glow. We had them upstate New York, too. I never saw owl eyes. But the thing that made me convinced besides the fact that it had just run over from that street to this street. I mean, this is an ongoing, uh, you know, thing. So we could hear it in the woods that, you know, come, it came towards my property and it's standing there and I see one eye poke out from behind a tree and then it goes back. And then I see, you know, because that's come out again. Then I see the one eye. Then I see two eyes. And it's looking right at me. And then it puts his head behind the tree again. I don't know if owls can do that. Mm. You know what I mean? He'd have to be sitting on the branch just right. He'd have to have really big eyes. No way these were owl eyes. They had. They couldn't be. Now that I'm thinking about it, they were way too big. Mm-hmm. They had to be at least the size of baseballs for me to see them from there. And I don't know why they were glowing and I don't know why they were white. I don't know why they were lit up. It was almost like a cartoon. It was I, like I couldn't believe it. Yeah, that is that is strange. A lot of researchers have claimed it could be like a possible bioluminescence, kind of like, yeah. I don't know, like the deep sea the deep fish that live at the bottom of the ocean that light up or, or glow certain colors. Well, you know, I did, uh, I ha- had a light installed on my driveway on the uh, electricity pole. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if you know, like when you're out in the country, if you have like utility pole on your, on your property, they can come and like put like one of those big lights at the top. Yeah. Yeah. We got one. Yeah. So I had that done on my driveway because it's so dark out there. I could barely find my way to my car at night. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and I don't want to walk into something I don't want to walk into. I didn't have anything on my back property that was pitch black dark, so they can go back there whenever they want, but there was a light up there. So I don't know if it had anything to do with any kind of part of that street light. I'll be able to go through the woods and, and reflect from the eyes. Like, I'm not saying it was bioluminescence. It could have been with the Mm -hmm. refraction of light, Right. but I mean, the chances of it being able to get through all those leaves and stuff. And it just doesn't sound likely. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Okay. So you've experienced these encounters and strange occurrences in the woods. You've been chasing these things ever since. Yes. What do you plan on doing when you run into one of these things? Nothing. (laughs) (laughs) What's your goal? I guess I should ask. My goal is I just have, I want to see another, I saw it. I mean, I be careful what you wish for. Mm -hmm. And I know like if I was walking through the woods and I came face to face with one, I would just about die. But (laughs) I have to, I have to see one again. Yeah. That's how I am. It's It's like in in my my blood. It's in my soul. Like I have, I have to see one again. And I'm going to spend the rest of my life doing it. I know the feeling. I don't care what it takes. I don't care what it takes. I got to I got to Yeah, I mean, some people like to hunt. Some people like to bird watch. And, I mean, you <laughs> like to go looking for Bigfoot. But, I, I mean, at least you're still on the outdoors and you're staying active. I yeah. see nothing wrong with that. Yeah, and I take my dog with me because <laughs> she's the only one that is willing to go. Yeah. Can you describe the the van that you made for um, going on these? Oh yeah. Trips? I, I mean, yeah. I I love it. I just I took out. It's got snow and go seating. I just took all bolts and I took everything apart and I took all the seats out. I threw some carpet back there. 
I threw a cot back there and I got a cooler and I got a camp stove and I spent tons of money buying all this stuff. I bought a, a, a power station so I could run, you know, have electric and, and um, I got binoculars. I, I hope someday to be able to get, um, I want some, uh, not only uh, infra- infrared, but I want some thermal too. Mm-hmm. I want to be able to see them at night. Yeah, that's real cool. You know, and I can sleep out in the woods. I can't, I see, I know they're out there, so I can never sleep in a tent again. Mm-hmm. And not because I'm, af- I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm afraid of them. They could, you don't <laughs> know who you get involved with, but a tent is it's just not, it's not good enough. Yeah. You know, so I'm in this steel box and I have a moon roof. I could stand up and still be in my van. And if anything bad happens, I could just plop right into my seat and peel out and take off. So yeah, it's that's like the awesome. ultimate, it's the ultimate Sasquatch mobile. <laughs> yeah. I want to see it. If you ever want to send over some photos, I'd love to check it out. I'm trying to do okay. something the same myself. Awesome. You know what? I was thinking about actually when I was thinking about doing the video call with you, I was going to do it from in the, inside my van. Oh man, that would have been great. Maybe, um, I, I mean, you're going out and doing these, these trips. So surely you're going to have more experiences and I, I hope so. Yeah, the next yeah, I got like I got LED lights out, you know, in it, and it's it's really cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, you got to do the same thing. Oh, I'm definitely gonna do something. I don't know. I'm planning on getting like a Ford F one fifty or Bronco yeah. or some type of SUV or like or maybe a van and turn it you into. You know what? Even if you don't want to go to campsites, I've been looking everywhere. Everywhere there are boat ramps, and a lot of them are twenty four hours. Mm. So, I mean, that's a great place to park for the night. Yeah. <laughs> or any other, you know, any place like around the river or swamp areas or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, and it's great. And you can, you can sit there and even just listen all night yeah. long. And if, if you hear something, you could just kind of like pop your head out. It's just a lot of work when you go to these places and look for sign. Like you can only get so far in there without, you know, with, you'll get exhausted real quick. So it's yeah. nice to have a place to come back, get water, get oh, food exactly. and hey, just man, rest. I'm 56 years old, you know, and I can only, I can only walk so far and then I got to eat something or whatever, you know? So I carry yeah. food with me and bottles of water and, you know, and I'll just go out with my dog, you know, go for a walk and then I'll come back to the van, make some lunch. You know, go out for another walk and then I'll come back and I'll, you know, just lay, we'll lay in bed at night and just listen. Mm. It's perfect. Yeah, that's awesome. See, that's what's ruined a lot of my there. trips. You got to like, be out there. You got to be in it to win it. Yeah, I'll go out there and not be prepared and just last like two or three hours and be like, all right, I got to yeah. go home and eat. <laughs> you got to spend time. And how, 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 what better way to spend time than bring food and bed with you? Mm hmm. Yeah, and that's a perfect place to have an experience. You know, who knows? Maybe they'll come up and exactly come up to the van. And you're, and you're pretty much safe unless they dump your van over. But I would say I, that I feel secure inside that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, they're going to smell the food, so they'll come in. Yeah. I mean, my dog lets me know when she hears anything anywhere near, you know. She wakes yeah. up. Mm-hmm. So she'll hear before I even hear it. Yeah, sounds like you're all set up and you're prepared for the most part. I'm ready. Yeah, most people think I'm nuts, you know, but I got to do what I got to do. I know it's there. Mm-hmm. No, I admire I admire that and you're living life to the fullest, so that's awesome. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. All right, Erica. Well, I think that pretty much sums up your story and... I think that wraps up all the questions I had. Do you have anything else you want to throw in? No, I'm, I, I think we went a little over time, but sorry about that. And I, I just, I want, I really hope to hear from some of your viewers. Oh no, you're fine. And it was such a great story. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And anytime you have another experience or another encounter, feel free to get in touch with me and I'll be glad to have you back on the show. Okay, cool. I'm going to email you some photos or something. Are you on Facebook? Yeah, yeah, I have Facebook. Okay, um, yeah, hit me up, or I'll, I'll try and find you. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll you send you my info. I'm, yeah, because I post pictures of where I go, and, you know, okay, you know yeah. where I'm at. Sounds okay. good. All right, I'll be seeing you.
All right, Erica. Well, you have yourself a good night, and it was certainly a pleasure speaking with you. Okay. Thanks so much, Miguel. Yeah, you have a good night. Bye-bye. Erica, I appreciate you telling your story here on Sasquatch Theory, and I know my listeners did too. And just be careful when you're out there in these remote places looking for Bigfoot. Bigfoot can be scary and all, but I personally worry more about running into the wrong person deep in the woods. Just because what, a Bigfoot's going to bluff charge you or try to steal your Cheetos, but you never know what a person will do when they are hard up for money or food. Just keep your van doors locked and a good eye on your stuff, because you never know. She mentioned her town has one stoplight and a dollar store, so that gives you a pretty good idea of how remote she is. I wish you the best of luck on your journey, and I hope you contact me again in the future. Alright everyone, I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and I will catch you guys next time.